Oh my god, what Just go home, alright? Please. Please. The casting process for the 1962 TV series, The Virginian, was a careful selection of talents to bring the Old West to life. Producers aimed to create a compelling ensemble that would resonate with audiences. For the role of the Virginian, or Judge Garth, they chose Lee J. Cobb. Cobb's powerful and intense acting style made him a standout choice. The producers were looking for someone who could portray the strong, silent type with depth, and Cobb fit the bill. James Drury was cast as the lead, the title character, the Virginian. Drury's audition demonstrated his ability to convey the necessary toughness, intelligence, and charisma. He had a natural chemistry with Cobb, which helped seal his casting. Doug McClure joined the cast as Trampas, a recurring character who evolved into a series regular. McClure's charm and roguish good looks made him a perfect fit for the role. He brought a certain magnetism to the character, which helped endear him to audiences. For the role of Deputy Sheriff, they chose Gary Clark. Clark's audition showcased his ability to play a reliable, supportive character. He had a solid chemistry with Drury and McClure, which helped create a strong ensemble. In conclusion, the casting process for the Virginian was a careful selection of talented actors who could bring the Old West to life. Through auditions and chemistry tests, the producers found the perfect cast to create a compelling and enduring TV series. But we put together a pretty good little plot. The Virginian, a 1962 TV series, was brought to life by director Roy Huggins. Huggins' approach was characterized by his attention to detail and commitment to authenticity. He was deeply influenced by classic Western literature and aimed to create a show that captured the spirit of the American West. Huggins' directorial style was marked by his focus on character development and visual storytelling. He worked closely with the cast and crew to ensure that every scene served a purpose and revealed something new about the characters. Huggins believed in collaboration and encouraged input from everyone involved in the production. One of Huggins' key creative influences was the work of author Owen Wister, whose novel The Virginian served as the basis for the TV series. Huggins was drawn to Wister's vivid descriptions of the American West and his complex characters. He sought to bring Wister's vision to life on screen, while also adding his own unique perspective. In terms of visual style, Huggins favored wide shots and sweeping vistas to capture the vastness of the American West. He also used close-ups to highlight the emotions of the characters and create a sense of intimacy. Huggins worked closely with cinematographers to achieve the desired look and feel for each scene. Huggins' collaborative approach extended to his work with the cast. He encouraged the actors to develop their characters and provided them with the freedom to explore their roles. He believed that the best performances came from actors who were fully invested in their characters and the story. In addition to his work as a director, Huggins was also a prolific writer and producer. He contributed to the development of many successful TV shows and films, leaving a lasting impact on the entertainment industry. Overall, Roy Huggins' directorial vision for The Virginian was marked by his commitment to authenticity, his focus on character development, and his collaborative approach. His work on the series helped to establish the Western as a popular genre and continues to be celebrated today. Ask about you. Said he'd be out to see you in a couple of days. The Virginian is a classic TV series that first aired in 1962. It's a Western drama that takes place in the late 1800s and follows the life of a ranch foreman named The Virginian, played by James Drury. The show is known for its simple, straightforward storytelling and features a wide range of guest stars, including classic Hollywood actors like Lee J. Cobb, Charles Bronson, and Harrison Ford. This TV series has had a significant impact on my life. It has inspired me to appreciate the beauty of the American West and the values of hard work, loyalty, and justice. I'm sure many of you have your own cherished memories or personal experiences related to this TV series. We would love to hear your stories and memories in the comments below. As for my favorite actor in The Virginian, I have to go with James Drury. His portrayal of The Virginian is both strong and nuanced, and he brings a sense of dignity and integrity to the character that is truly captivating. But there's so much more to this TV series than just my personal experiences and opinions. 
Over the course of this video, we'll be sharing some fascinating facts about the Virginian that you might not know. From funny stories about the cast and crew to shocking behind the scenes moments, we'll be exploring all aspects of this classic TV series. So stay tuned because there are many surprising, amusing, and emotional moments coming up. You won't want to miss a thing. Clear for one hour. I mean, you cool off and get some sense into your head, you can go back to your business. The Virginian, a 1962 TV series, was filmed primarily at Review Studios in Hollywood, where sound stages were dressed to resemble the wide open spaces of the American West. Set design was crucial, with careful attention given to recreating the era's architectural styles, furniture, and props. Exterior shots were filmed on location in California and sometimes in Utah, standing in for the show's Wyoming setting. The production team faced logistical challenges, such as transporting cast and crew, managing livestock, and dealing with unpredictable weather. Innovative techniques were employed to enhance the viewing experience. For instance, the series was one of the first to be broadcast in color, making the landscapes and set pieces more vivid and lifelike. The production team also used a technique called split-screen shooting, allowing two separate actions to be filmed simultaneously and combined into a single scene. Despite these advancements, filming was not without its challenges. The series required a significant amount of coordination and planning, from securing permits for location filming to ensuring the safety of the cast and crew. However, the end result was a visually stunning and engaging TV series that captured the spirit of the American West. Why? Oh, well, when he decides and Starbucks can begin to water... The Virginian, a Western series that debuted in 1962, was a late arrival compared to its contemporaries like Cheyenne, Wagon Train, and Rawhide. While these shows were initially presented in black and white on small screens, The Virginian stood out with its 75-minute color episodes. However, the production team's background in the earlier era is evident in the occasional oversights, which are more noticeable in color and on modern large screens. Watching seasons three and four on DVD, and catching up on seasons one and two on Freeview, I noticed some contradictions. The use of acting royalty like Bette Davis and George C. Scott was ambitious, but the interior shots, particularly the exterior world viewed through open doorways, were painted backdrops that appeared amateurish. Despite my fondness for westerns, I found it difficult to connect with the Shiloh regulars initially. The introduction of Emmett Riker in season three, played by Clue Gulliger, changed my viewing experience. His clever script, an intriguing character with a complex past and sharp intellect, made him instantly captivating. Unlike other characters, Riker was not subjected to doomed love affairs, which made him even more appealing. Regrettably, Riker's absence in season 5 led to a decline in my interest, and I turned to the High Chaparral for entertainment. However, revisiting the Virginian episodes, I am impressed by what the actors and production team achieved in the limited time they had. Season 3, in particular, stands out for its quality. The constant turnover of regular cast members from Season 4 onwards, with some long absences and disappearances unexplained, can be frustrating for viewers who have invested time in following the story arcs of certain characters. Nevertheless, I recommend starting with Season 3 to new viewers, and then deciding where to go from there. Three years. <laughs> Doc. The 1962 TV series The Virginian featured a score and soundtrack that effectively complemented the narrative and emotional tone of the show. The music was crafted to enhance the storytelling, often reflecting the tension, drama, and camaraderie depicted on screen. Composers and musicians worked closely with the creators to ensure the music aligned with the mood of each scene, adding depth and resonance to the overall viewing experience. Their collaborative efforts resulted in a soundtrack that became an integral part of the show's identity, resonating with audiences and contributing to its lasting impact. How much farther to go, Finn? Three, four hours. James Drury, known for his role in The Virginian, attended Western film fairs in Charlotte, North Carolina in 1997 and 2003. In 2003, he reunited with co-stars Gary Clark, Randy Boone and Roberta Shore. In the show's final season, it was renamed The Men from Shiloh and featured a new credit sequence with a theme by Italian composer Ennio Morricone. The Virginian, the main character, is promoted to foreman and moves out of the bunkhouse in the book. He and Trampas have a strained relationship, 
culminating in Trampa's death at the Virginian's hands. The ranch, named Sunk Creek, is located 270 miles from Medicine Bow. The show and book offer a look into the life and challenges of ranch hands in the American West. In case someone asks, well, it, it, it really isn't the right. One of the most iconic scenes in the Virginian is the fight between the Virginian, played by James Drury, and Trampas, portrayed by Doug McClure, in the first episode. The scene is set in the town of Medicine Bow, with the men standing in the middle of the street. The tension between them is palpable, and the audience is on the edge of their seats as they wait to see who will make the first move. The scene is directed with a steady hand, allowing the actors' performances to take center stage. Drury's steely gaze and McClure's sneering grin are captured in close-ups, heightening the intensity of the moment. Cinematography plays a crucial role in building the atmosphere of the scene. The wide shot of the empty street, the sun casting long shadows, and the saloon door creaking in the wind all add to the sense of anticipation. The impact of this scene on the audience is immense. It sets the tone for the entire series, establishing the Virginian as a man of honor who will not back down from a fight. Another iconic scene is the final showdown in the episode The Brazen Bell. The Virginian must face off against a ruthless killer named Miro Crawford, played by David Carradine. The scene is shot in the rugged mountains, with the two men standing on a narrow ledge overlooking a steep drop. The cinematography is breathtaking, with sweeping shots of the landscape and close-ups of the actors' faces, etched with determination and fear. The direction of the scene is masterful, with the tension building slowly as the two men circle each other. The performances of Drury and Carradine are exceptional, with every movement and gesture charged with meaning. The impact of this scene on the audience is profound. It is a powerful exploration of the themes of honor, courage, and the human will to survive. These scenes have become iconic because they encapsulate the spirit of the Virginian. They are a testament to the skill and talent of the actors, directors, and cinematographers who brought the series to life. The scenes resonate with the audience because they tap into universal themes and emotions, leaving a lasting impression that transcends the boundaries of time and culture. James Drury, initially a secondary lead for Disney, secured the leading role in The Virginian in 1962, after minor film appearances in the late 1950s. Drury's co-star, Lee J. Cobb, holds a notable film career, with four films in the National Film Registry, including On the Waterfront, Twelve Angry Men, How the West Was Won, and The Exorcist. Interestingly, Drury, in his future The Virginian co-star, James Best, first met on the set of Forbidden Planet in 1956, although they didn't share any scenes or lines together. Nine years later, they reunited on The Virginian, forming a close friendship that lasted until Best's passing in 2015. Than a king like that black stallion. Remind me, friend, to thank you, son. The 1962 TV series, The Virginian, had a significant cultural and social impact. It resonated with audiences due to its compelling storytelling and relatable characters, becoming one of the longest-running Western series in American television history. The show influenced pop culture, popularizing the adult Western genre and inspiring similar productions. The Virginian also contributed to discussions on relevant social and cultural themes. It addressed issues of justice, morality, and community responsibility, offering viewers thought-provoking narratives. The show's diverse cast, including African American and Native American characters, challenged stereotypes and promoted inclusivity. Moreover, the series showcased the beauty and harsh realities of frontier life, contributing to audiences' understanding of American history. Its depiction of the American West, though romanticized, reflected the spirit of adventure and self-reliance that defined the era. Overall, the Virginian left an indelible mark on television and American culture. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, there's no rush. Oh, no. No rush. Edward will wait. Charles Bickford, known for his role in the Virginian, was billed as Charles of Bickford early in his career with the standing for Ambrose. Prior to his acting career, Bickford had a brief stint as a boxer and worked in construction. In addition to his work on The Virginian, Bickford had a successful film career, earning three Academy Award nominations. Roberta Shore, who also appeared on The Virginian, had a career in music before turning to acting. 
She made numerous recordings with Lawrence Welk and Walt Disney, and even released an album with Randy Boone, a fellow Virginian cast member. Shore's album, Singing Star of the Virginian, featured songs performed on the TV series. The Virginian holds the record for the most 90-minute episodes of any television series, with a total of 249 episodes. This is unlikely to be surpassed by any other show, making The Virginian a unique and enduring part of television history. The series, which aired from 1962 to 1971, was known for its strong cast and engaging storylines and continues to be watched and enjoyed by audiences today. Coming back. Yeah, try some of this hot coffee, Will. It might help. Is there anything more I can do? Uh, the Virginian, a 1962 TV series, received positive reviews from critics and audiences alike. The show was praised for its strong storytelling, complex characters, and high production values. One critic from the New York Times described it as a thoughtful, well-acted, and often engrossing Western series. Audience reactions were also very favorable. The show was a hit with viewers who appreciated its realistic portrayal of life in the American West. It was one of the most popular shows on television during its time, and it has remained a classic of the genre. The Virginian was also recognized with several awards and nominations. It was nominated for four Emmy Awards, including Outstanding Drama Series, and won two Western Heritage Awards. These accolades are a testament to the quality of the show and the hard work of everyone involved. Receiving these awards and nominations was a significant achievement for the cast and crew of The Virginian. It not only validated their efforts, but also helped to establish the show as a classic of the Western genre. The awards and nominations also helped to boost the careers of the actors and other professionals who worked on the show. For them, these accolades were a mark of recognition and respect from their peers in the industry. In conclusion, The Virginian was a critically acclaimed and popular TV series that received several awards and nominations during its time. These accolades are a testament to the quality of the show and the hard work of everyone involved. They helped to establish the Virginian as a classic of the Western genre and to boost the careers of the cast and crew members who worked on the show. A couple, couple of strangers busted into Marion's all alone. All right, I'll get to Sheriff. I used to hear with Hezekiah. Lee J. Cobb, known for his powerful performances, appeared in five films nominated for the Best Picture Oscar. One of those films, On the Waterfront, won the award in 1954. Cobb's co-star in The Virginian, James Drury, was born in New York City and raised on a ranch in Oregon where he developed a love for horses and the outdoors. In The Virginian, Betsy, the daughter of Judge Henry Garth, has a notable backstory. She is actually adopted, a fact revealed only in the second episode of the first season, Woman from White Wing. This intriguing detail adds depth to Betsy's character and the overall storyline of the show. <laughs> but I knew I couldn't own no ranch on it. The Virginian, a 1962 TV series, was a landmark show that brought the American West to life. One anecdote from the set involves James Drury, who played the lead role. Drury was known for his horsemanship skills and often did his own stunts. In one episode, he had to jump off a cliff while riding his horse. To ensure safety, the stunt was rehearsed multiple times with a dummy, but when it came to the actual shoot, Drury decided to do it himself. He jumped but his horse stumbled on landing, causing Drury to injure his ankle. Despite the pain, he continued filming, embodying the tough spirit of the Old West. Another story revolves around Doug McClure, who played Trampas. McClure was known for his humor and often played pranks on the set. Once, he filled a cast member's boots with shaving cream, causing quite a laugh when the unsuspecting actor put them on. These light-hearted moments helped to keep the mood light during long filming days. The show's production designer, Al Pereira, was a veteran in the industry, having worked on classics like Hitchcock's North by Northwest. For the Virginian, he aimed to create authentic Western sets. He once shared an anecdote about sourcing real antiques for the set from local ranches, including an old wood-burning stove that became a fixture in the Shiloh Ranch House. These anecdotes offer a glimpse into the making of the Virginian, showcasing the dedication, camaraderie, and attention to detail that made this series a classic. Must be sick. Just get the bill paid. I'll be right there. Charles Bickford, known for his roles in Of Mice and Men, The Song of Bernadette, and Johnny Belinda, 
brought his Oscar-nominated talent to the Virginian. Despite the lead actors James Drury and Doug McClure appearing in all nine seasons, they didn't make it into every episode. Bickford's notable performance as a priest in the Virginian adds him to the list of eight actors, including Spencer Tracy and Gregory Peck, who have received Oscar nominations for such roles. Interestingly, Tracy, Bing Crosby, and Barry Fitzgerald are the three who took home Oscars for their priestly performances. The Virginian, a 1962 TV series, holds a significant place in film history as one of the first successful Western dramas on television. It introduced a new format, the 90-minute weekly show, which allowed for more complex storytelling than previous Western series. The show's ability to balance action, drama, and character development was a notable influence on future filmmaking, particularly in the Western genre. The Virginian is also known for its impact on subsequent works. It inspired several TV spin-offs and movies, including the 1966 film The Virginian starring James Drury, who played the lead role in the series. The show's themes of morality, justice, and the human condition have been echoed in numerous westerns that followed. The series' depiction of the American West, its characters, and their struggles have left a lasting impression on audiences and filmmakers alike. The Virginian's legacy can be seen in the continued popularity of Western-themed films and TV shows, as well as the enduring appeal of the cowboy hero archetype. Now, if you just sign this invoice, the cock... In the TV series The Virginian from 1962, the end credits listed many unnamed extras with the prominent use of the word the before their roles, such as the man or the bartender. This gave a sense of uniformity to the credits. One of the show's guest stars, Roberta Shore, attended the Western Film Fair in Charlotte, North Carolina in 1996 and 23. During the 2003 show, she had a memorable reunion with her co-stars James Drury, Gary Clark, and Randy Boone from The Virginian. Another notable cast member, Lee J. Cobb, was not only an accomplished actor, but also a skilled harmonica player. He once performed with the renowned Bora Meinvich and his harmonica rascals in the 1928 film, The Patriot, directed by Ernst Lubitsch. Cobb's harmonica skills added another dimension to his already impressive acting career. Sure. I will. Gary Clark, known for his role in The Virginian, attended the Western Film Fair in Charlotte, North Carolina in 23, accompanied by co-stars James Drury, Roberta Shore, and Randy Boone. Actor Charles Bickford, who also appeared in the series, had a notable connection to the Academy Awards. Every time he was nominated for Best Supporting Actor, one of his female co-stars took home the Oscar for Best Actress. On a more somber note, Lee J. Cobb, another Virginian cast member, suffered a severe heart attack in 1955 while filming the Houston story. I'll go on home. That's the kind of life we came out here to build. In the 1962 TV series The Virginian, Lee J. Cobb, a prominent actor, played significant roles. Cobb had been friends with Alva Bessie, a Communist Party member, and one of the Hollywood Ten, until a disagreement over a loan ended their friendship. Bessie had been financially devastated by legal fees related to his resistance against the House Un-American Activities Commission. Cobb later became a friendly witness for HUAC, naming former communists and leftists from his group theater days. Interestingly, future Hollywood Lister Harrison Ford appeared in two episodes of The Virginian. After Cobb's death, George C. Scott took over some of his roles in other productions, such as Lieutenant Kinderman in the Exorcist series and Juror No. 3 in 12 Angry Men. Scott also played Willie Lawman in the Broadway revival of Death of a Salesman, a role that Cobb had originated. These connections show how the entertainment industry is intertwined with actors' careers and roles often linked in unexpected ways. Throw it! Stuart Granger, known for his role in The Virginian, had a connection to the film The Red Shoes. When he learned that Michael Powell was looking for a dancer, Granger recommended Moira Shearer. James Drury and Doug McClure, both stars of The Virginian, hold a notable record. They are the only two actors to appear in all 249 episodes of the series, making their presence a significant one. Gary Clark, who also acted in The Virginian, moved on to write for the Get Smart series after leaving the show. 
His scripts introduce Jaime the robot, adding a new dimension to the series. How come? There's only two of us. There'll be three of us going back. Stuart Granger, known for his roles in The Light Touch and Sodom and Gomorrah, had a day dedicated to his film work on August 20, 2018, during the TCM Summer Under the Stars. Granger co-starred with Pierre Angeli in two films before they both appeared in the Virginian series. Despite James Drury's continuous presence in the Virginian for all 249 episodes, he and Doug McClure could not appear in every episode due to the show's 90-minute format. Cut the fence! The Virginian, a groundbreaking 90-minute Western series that first aired in 1962, made its mark in television history as the first of its kind. Among its notable cast members was Roberta Shore, who holds the distinction of being the first to record the song, Let There Be Peace on Earth. Stuart Granger, another cast member, brought his own unique background to the show. Before becoming an actor, Granger served in the Black Watch and was a second lieutenant when he was demobilized. His military experience undoubtedly contributed to his portrayal of characters in various films and series, including The Virginian. Men getting killed always troubles me. No call for you to fret about it. In the television series The Virginian from 1962, the foreman, also known as the Ramrod or simply the Virginian, is a central character whose real name remains a mystery. This character was portrayed by various actors over the years, with Lee J. Cobb being one of them. Cobb's acting career was notable, as he was featured in Bad Boys, the actors of film noir by Karen Burroughs Hansberry. Interestingly, the role of Willie Lawman in the stage play Death of a Salesman was written specifically for Cobb by Arthur Miller. Prior to his television role in The Virginian, Cobb had already made a name for himself on stage, showcasing his talent and earning recognition in the acting industry. I don't know. In the late 1890s, Carbon County, Wyoming, home to Medicine Bow in the TV series The Virginian, had a population of approximately 9,000. James Drury, who played the lead role, enjoyed immense popularity in Finland in 1971, where he made four appearances during midsummer festivals. His reception was likened to that of Elvis Presley and Frank Sinatra in the U.S. The character Steve's last name in the 1962 series was Hill, differing from the 1946 film version where it was Andrews. Interestingly, in Owen Wister's original novel, and the 1914, 1923, and 1929 film productions, Steve's last name remains undisclosed. In the 1962 TV series The Virginian, a future Hollywood A-lister made appearances in two episodes, marking an early step in their successful career. The series also featured Stuart Granger, a British actor who gained fame in the 1943 movie The Man in Grey. Granger's passion for music led him to take violin lessons from David McCallum's father for his part in the Magic Bow, demonstrating his dedication to his craft. These interesting facts add depth to the series and highlight the diverse backgrounds of its talented cast. Uh, you, you finish loading up the wagon while I show a little uh, medicine bow, Austin. The Virginian, a popular NBC series that aired from 1962 to 1971, was broadcast every Wednesday at 739 RPM. The show was set in Medicine Bow, a town in Wyoming, where the Shiloh Ranch is located. One of the actors who joined the cast in the third season was Stuart Granger, known for his dashing roles in films such as The Prisoner of Zenda and Scaramouche. Granger took his fencing skills very seriously and trained rigorously with a retired Olympic fencing champion. His dedication was such that he wore out a dozen pairs of fencing shoes while preparing for Scaramouche. Granger's fencing prowess was so impressive that he was considered one of the best swashbucklers of his time, second only to Bezel Rathbone. Go, what do you say? All right. I guess I am a little impatient. <laughs> If the 1962 TV series The Virginian holds a special place in your heart, we'd love to hear your stories. Share your memories and experiences related to this classic show. How did it affect you personally? In what ways did it influence your perspective on cinema? Your engagement is vital. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more cinematic explorations. Let's keep the conversation going, celebrating the shows that have left a lasting impression on us.